Hello everyone, Mr. Mean 35000 VR here, and today I'm going to be showing you how you can play Wii games online after the Nintendo Wi-Fi connection shut down using a service known as WiiNFi, which was developed by Wii and later Rata. Now, there are several methods that you can use to do this. Uh, all of them involve homebrew channels, <laughs> so or homebrew of some description. So if you don't have one of these channels right here, it's probably about time you get one. I have got a video on how to get, a, to get the homebrew channel. If you'd be interested in seeing that, the link is in the description or the annotation that you see on your screen right now. And there are also plenty of tutorials all over YouTube on how to get one. So this is going to assume that you have a homebrew channel. Right. So there are two methods of patching games. There's this one here, the auto Weemfy patcher, and this one is for real game discs. And there's this one here for your ISOs and game mods. Not including the CTGP, I'll just throw that one out there. The CTGP will update itself and will work with WeemFi. So I'm going to start with this one. This is a piece of software that I coded, hence the hence it's at chadsoft.co.uk. So what you want to do for this one is this really simple stuff if you've got a homework channel. So you get this link, it's in the description. Paste it into a browser of some description, apparently I already had it there. Uh, save it in a useful empty folder. And once you have that, you want to go right click on it and click extract all. Click browse. Put your SD card in your computer and navigate to it. And just click on the SD card at its root, which is the highest thing, none of the folders inside, just click there. Click OK. Click extract. It might say, if you've, if you've got a homebrew channel that you use frequently, it might say, do you want to do some merging? The answer, of course, is yes, you do. Replace any files that it talks about as well. Here's the, here is my SD card. What it'll do, for those who are interested, it adds the apps, bslug, and readme files to the SD card, which are required to use this little patch. The readme just contains some useful instructions and a small change log. It's, I would recommend reading this and checking out the, the pages that are listed both in this readme and in the description in the homebrew channel itself. But that is your call. <laughs> but, don't come, but if you say something to me that is already in a readme, I'm not going to help you with it. Right. So once you've, done, so once you've copied all that to your SD card, and that's hunky-dory lovely and beautiful, what you want to do is go, you put your... Not that window? Come on! That's the, see, this right here is the capture window. That's not what I want to display at all. I want to display this, the other capture window. The actually useful capture window. Right, so what you want to do, put your SD card, after doing the extraction, back into your Wii. And then run your homebrew channel. There's going to be no audio for this bit. No audio from the Wii. Very sorry. So... Once it all loads up, you're looking for this Wii Fight Patcher. If, you're, if all the files are on the uh, are on the uh, SD card correctly, it will be right there. Then what you want to do before running or after running, it doesn't really matter, is insert the disk that you want to patch. This is not a permanent patch, just so you know. So you have to run this Wii Fight Patcher every time you want to do it. So no, you can't. It doesn't change your disk in any way, shape, or form. For the records, a Wii isn't actually capable of doing that. So yeah. Uh, I've got Mario Kart Wii inserted right now. That's fair. That seems like a sensible thing to have inserted. So I'm going to load it up. It is just a console. It's not very pretty. Not at the moment. This may change in time. By the time you get this download, it might have already changed. Anyway, very quick little procedure. It does that. And now the game is patched and will use Wii doesn't say that, mind you. It doesn't say Wii Fi, it still says Nintendo Wi-Fi connection. But I assure you that it, that, it, that it is that. Now, here are Wii server statistics. Let me just refresh to get the latest values. There is one player online right now, so that's not me, that's whoever else happens to be online right now. So this is just this is just me proving that this is on Wii Fi rather than uh, regular uh, regular Wi-Fi services. So I'm going to click Worldwide Versus Race. Now if I click click refresh on this page, there are two players online because I joined in, and there's one player in a Worldwide. Good enough stuff. So yeah, there I am. That's working. So that's Mario Kart Wii. I'll demonstrate with one other game to, to prove that it's all 
good and wonderful. I think the game I will select for this is Brawl, because I happen to have it to hand, and I think it's going to be the second most popular thing that this is used for. Here we go. Here goes Brawl. I'm going to rerun the homebrew channel. And rerun the patch. Well, that was good. Better. Better. Apparently my Wii doesn't like Brawl all that much. But then again, whose Wii does? Alright. Let me get in. Let me get right into this. Now loading. Of course, Brawl takes forever to load. I kind of forgot about that part. It makes the Wii sound like it's trying to ingest something very painful whenever it tries. Anyway, I'm going to connect up on this one as well. With any luck. Ah, no. Error code 31020 is what occurs when they're doing, uh... Well, it occurs when they're doing maintenance if the game doesn't soft lock. <laughs> which happened the other day, that was pretty funny. So, unfortunately, this demonstration is going to fall flat, but uh, they're, doing, they're doing work on it right now, so we can't actually, I can't actually show you it, but if you try it later on, it's probably going to be fine. That's a little disappointing. Right, well, I'll show you one other game instead then, because why not? That was a waste of time. So, one of the games that was uh, being talked about frequently on the German forums is this Pro Evolution Soccer series. Uh, that... Uh, I decided I would try to find a pre-owned one from the series to see if I could make my patch of work with it to, to make it general. So, sure enough, I went into a shop and I found the 2008 one for 25 pence. I figured that was a cheap enough price to warrant buying it, even if I would never play it. So, let me take this one online for you. Figures they'd be doing maintenance when I'm trying to make a demo video. Lol. That's just my luck, right? Anywho. So I've really never played this game before at all. All I've done is gone and connected to the Wi-Fi connection a few times. Which is cute. Or Wi-Fi rather. In fact, yeah, I never did use the never have used this on regular Wi-Fi connection at all. I am bean test. Get high. Here is its Nintendo Wi-Fi connection function. The later versions of this game apparently work, like 2000 and whatever number it is. If I search for a match, and click proceed. Connecting to Wi-Fi connection. Still connecting to Wi-Fi connection. Free match. Searching. As far as I'm concerned, that's working. <laughs> right. No, you won't let me quit. You suck. Right, anyway. Pro Evolution Soccer aside. So, this page is actually a really useful one. This is the statistics page for the uh, Wii Man fight. It shows you what uh, games are currently supported. This page might expand at some point, so keep checking back. If your favourite game is not on here, it could still come along. Anything labelled as blue and working should be working. Super Smash Bros. Brawl, we're looking at you. Uh, anything labelled test might not be working. I know for a fact that Mario Strikers is iffy because uh, there are no leaderboards and stuff like that, so the game constantly gets errors getting stuff. I know they're working on this one though, so it might manifest a bit later on. But yeah, anything that says generic next to it as well just means that it's a very stripped down server with a basic matchup functionality that hasn't really been tested and could probably use testing. So, if you've got any of these games, feel free to pop them in and check them out. Okay, so the second part of this little demonstration, we'll be looking into 
the ISOs and game mods. So here is the link that you need for that one, which I have open here. So you can be copying and pasting it. This is the Weemfy hyphen patcher, not to be confused with my one, which is the Homebrew channel application. This one is for your computer. This one works with your ISOs. So if you if you wanted to use one for Mario Kart Wii, click this link instead and you'll find another download. But otherwise, you come to here, you see this download.wim.de, etc. I don't need to say that URL aloud. Right click save as. I'm gonna put it in my useful empty folder. I'm gonna open that folder again. I'm gonna extract this one. So useful empty folder WeanPy patcher, which happens to be on my desktop. Right. Here is the README. Copy all the original images to this directory and run the batch file. That's it. Done. So basically what you want to do is go and get an ISO subscription. Now, uh, this might take me a moment because I'm not sure if I have any ISOs lurking around. I'll be right back. Ah, found one. The one here. Mario Kart Wii. Obviously. Let's put that over here. Ah, yeah. Kind of got a copy for meta for gigs. All right, see you in a few minutes. All right, we're back. So, this demonstration is going to be a little bit silly because obviously I'm using the non-Mario Kart patcher on Mario Kart. Now, I'll tell you why that doesn't matter, basically. The Mario Kart patcher is a bit special because it goes through the ISO and looks for for text files and changes the text on the game so it says it's connecting to the custom server and stuff like that. And this generic patcher does not do that, it just goes through and changes the uh, servers, much like my little homebrew app did, so it doesn't really matter. But yeah, this will patch any old ISO. So, the instruction said to run this. So it's going to start and it's going to mess around. I already noticed it did something. Again, it's made a folder called WeanFile Images where it's put across a full gigabyte temporary file. I get the feeling this isn't going to be the fastest operation in the world either, since, yeah, it's going to be messing around with four gigs of data. Anyway, but the basic upshot is, if all goes to plan, that should just do it. And I suppose I can skip ahead again to save you from waiting for all of this. Okay, so it's just wrapping up now. And there we go. There is my new patched ISO. And if I were to run this ISO and put it on my way, uh, I would be able to connect up to WeemFi. But I don't have any reliable ISO loaders lurking around like right now, so I can't actually demonstrate. You're just going to have to take my word for it. But if you're an ISO user, you know how to put your ISOs on a USB stick anyway, so I don't need to tell you that. Right, so, next. Uh, that's basically all I wanted to cover in terms of... Uh, the actual patching process. Now I should think I should tell you a little bit more about what problems you might have. Now there is a page that has been set up uh, right here which lists error codes because error codes can happen. So you've got, you've got a couple of interesting ones here. Profile and console are banned. Yep, we can ban you. Just Play nice is all I'm going to say, and that's fine. I already know that someone got banned already, so that was kind of sad. They weren't that clever. Anyway, another very common error code, the one that I expect a lot of people to get when you just try a random game, is that. No, 23911. Game's not supported. Whoops. These these other ones down here are very unlikely to, to, very unlikely to pop up. In fact, all of these are very unlikely to pop up. Uh, you might get a couple of these from uh, my dynamic homebrewer patcher if uh, it doesn't do the job properly, but theoretically you should never see these ones. There is one more error code that's not listed here, and that one that is more Im immediately meaningful uh, is error code 60,000. And what that one does means profile not recognised or profile not found. What that means is that your friend code can't be used. That's because it didn't get saved from Nintendo Wi-Fi connection. Uh, now, if you saw my previous video, which is now gone, uh, about entering your friend codes into the database and whatnot, then you're probably not going to get this error code as long as you entered all your friend codes incorrectly. 
There are ways to get around. There are other ways to get around error code sixty thousand for Mario Kart in particular. There is an app. It's listed in the README of this uh, that you can download, and it will extract your friend code information from your save file, and that can be submitted to the server, and then it will remove error code sixty thousand. But for less supported games. What you will have to do in the event of error code 60,000 is to uh, just get a new frame code. Which will mean that you have to restart your online profile from scratch and whatnot, but hey, it's better than not being able to play at all. So, you're going to have to bear, bear with us on that one. And yeah, I think actually, yeah, that should cover everything. So, thank you for watching. Hope this has been interesting. Uh, hope... I hope that you're interested in playing online again via WeemFi. I know I'll be playing online on Mario Kart, the CTGP, and similar. I know a lot of people who did not want to see the Nintendo Wi-Fi connection shut down will also be out there. So I sincerely hope that this service is successful. For all the work that's got into it and gone into it, it better be. So send your thanks to Weem and Lisa Ratta and all of the people who reside on this forum here for their efforts. They have been working tirelessly. You can just see all of this random stuff floating around, all of these threads, and the German subforum, which is also filled with random threads about, well, everything to do with the servers. I really like what happened here. I think this is a brilliant collaboration project, and Louis and Laserata did amazing work. So, with that in mind, send them your thanks, send them your praise, and I will see you all online. Thanks for watching.